Hello folks and welcome to another Darktable Landscapes video. In this one we're going to be looking at how to deal with a scene with a lot of dynamic range, a high dynamic range, not an HDR file, but one where there's a, lot, a wide difference between the dark tones and the light tones in the image, um, which is something you come across quite often in landscape photography, especially shooting into the sun. So let's see how we can deal with it in this shot. Now the first thing I'm going to do is a lens correction because we've got some vignetting in the corners and I think maybe because we're shooting directly into the sun, even the automatic correction isn't doing much good. So I'm going to use the manual vignette connect correction. That's pretty good. And now let's look at exposure. This is one of my converted DNGs from Fuji files. So exposure isn't kind of on by default. Now, naturally we've kind of made the sky too bright here. So what I'm going to do to deal with this disparity in the, uh, the exposure in the sky and the ground is simply use two exposure modules and mask them off. So I use a, a gradient mask, spin that round so we're just brightening the ground and we'll use shift and roll just to give a more gradual effect. And now the main problem is that our sky almost looks kind of artificially dark so we'll use another one. I'm just going to bump exposure a bit in this foreground. There we go. So we'll call this one foreground. And then we'll right click and we'll call this one sky. And we'll brighten the sky a little bit, but not as much as the ground, just so they look naturally like they belong together. And then we'll mask that as well. There we go. So two very simple adjustments there. And this was shot at 800 ISO. Uh, obviously I handheld this. I think I did pop it on the tripod afterwards once I realised it was a half decent composition and I bracketed and so I could do a proper blend or an HDR. But this initial shot was just 800 ISO. But we've also bumped up the exposure by what? Uh, see, 1.3 EV. So this will need denoising. Bumping exposure in post is essentially tantamount to raising ISO in the camera as well these days. So we'll denoise. So I'm going to turn on Denoise Profiled and I'm going to bump up the, the automatically selected ISO 800. I'm just going to choose a thousand just to compensate for that fact that we've boosted exposure uh, artificially as well in the uh, exposure module. Now let's uh, do our usual port of core first for color balance RGB. We'll add some vibrance and maybe a touch of contrast is obviously very contrasty already in fact i don't think i'll even bother with that one uh, some stepped perceptual saturation grading and what can we do with these the shadows are quite deep already i don't know if i want to deepen them too much and nor do i want to lift them too much but maybe just a hint midtones are probably about in the right place and highlights i'll drop a little we are blowing out a little here in the red channel certainly but that's kind of to be expected the sun is of course blown out but the sun is the sun and uh, i'm i'm happy to blow out the sun in this kind of shot and we'll pop into the four ways tab and we'll add some slight blueness to the shadow so the four ways tab lets you control uh, luminance the brightness of the shadows, the highlights, and power here is midtones separately. And you can also add a slight hue to them for essentially color grading. So adding a kind of a slightly cooler tone in the shadows, especially when there's very strong oranges in the highlights. Uh, I'll just shift this more towards purple, actually. There we go. Can just add a nice effect. As always, less is more. Maybe that's too much. Drop it in there. There we go. OK, and I think the sky is a little too blue compared to the the area on the horizon where the, the sunrise is very pink and it was very pink and orange. Um, the sky is quite blue. So let's just do um, color correction. And we will kind of drag this to an area that's um, roughly analogous to this color here. Kind of a pinky orange. And I don't want it too strong in the foreground, but I want the light in the foreground to kind of fall onto the uh, onto the ground, the light in the sky rather. So let's use another gradient mask back there. 
and maybe drop the opacity a little so it's not too strong. So it's just kind of tinted the sky in a slightly more uh, natural way, if you like. Maybe drop the saturation a touch so we're not going overboard. And there are a couple of sensor spots that may not be too visible on YouTube, but there's a good way of visualizing these very quickly. If you grab a instance of the contrast equalizer and just kind of uh, grab these left hand points, drag them up, and then you'll see that they really become more visible. Uh, obviously the rest of the image looks terrible, but we're just using this temporarily as kind of a check layer. Uh, so now we can go to our retouch module. There we go. And we're in, uh, I think this is the healing tool. And we'll grab the circle. And then we will just click, left click and drag to select where we're cloning from. Uh, thank you to Bruce from audio to you a, a dark table Titan for that tip. So it allows you just to choose where you're cloning from, from the get go. And then I will grab another one. There's another one here. Just grab it from there. Let's have a look. So, and then maybe one here as well. So let's roll the mouse wheel to make it smaller. We don't want to, don't want to clone anything out that's, uh, we don't need to. I didn't drag that. Control Z to undo. There we go. Mm, actually, it's not too visible. There's one here. Might do just to be complete. Oh, there we go. I can see it. Uh, there. That should do the job. And I think you'll find that when we now go to our contrast equalizer and just kill that, that that's made a pretty good result. Okay, let's do our normal uh, clarity and texture. So another instance of the contrast equalizer. Uh, this first one has remembered our check layer setting. So we'll just reset by uh, clicking the reset button here. There we go. And then I'll, I, I could have just right clicked and used my uh, preset, but it's always useful to know how to reset these things anyway. So that's the default clarity. I think that's probably enough. We don't want to go crazy. And then we'll just clone and texture boost. And I think the default there is pretty good as well. So we're just raising the ends of the graph here. You've seen any of my other videos, you've probably seen this before because I do it for pretty much everything. That's fine. And we do have a suggestion of some rays coming off the sun, which normally you achieve with using a smaller aperture. This is F9, not particularly small, just enough for the depth of field. Um, but we can accentuate that uh, with the contrast equalizer as well. So I've got another instance here. I'll just pop that on. Pop that on. And if you just lift the middle uh, of the curve, you can see if I zoom in on the sun here, you can see that those rays are becoming more accentuated. Uh, we can roll that one down, just make it a little bit more even, an even curve. But naturally, we've completely overcooked the rest of the image. And uh, probably do with bringing the whole thing down now, just now that you've seen the effect. There we go. But we've still added too much contrast for my liking here. So we'll use a mask. I'll use an ellipse. That's way too big. So we'll roll our mouse wheel down. And what I want to do is capture the rays without affecting uh, kind of the hills and the rest of the scene too much. So I'll bring in that, that feather quite tight. There we go. So if I just turn off the preview there and put the module off and on, you can see how we're really accentuating the rays of the sun without completely overcooking the rest of the scene. So we'll call this uh, rays, and then we just need to do the usual finishing touches. So sharpening up, and deep blur medium. That's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. And then we'll do uh, 
another instance of that. So we'll do local contrast, local contrast fast for now. See how that looks. Uh, perhaps a tad strong. So you uniform mask, drop the opacity a little. Yeah, that's better. And then finally a vignette. So we'll use another exposure module and grab another oval. Pull it nice and big. Now we've taken care to kind of remove that vignetting in the corners. So we don't want to affect corners too much. Mainly this kind of area here, just darken it down in the corners. Give it a good feather with shift and roll. And then invert our mask so we're affecting outside the oval. And drop our exposure a little. That's fine. And in fact, I think what I'll do is I'll crop, I'll crop the whole image to something a little more uh, cinematic. There's nothing much going on in this sky. All the, all the good part of the sky is here in this mist and the sunrise. Up here, we're pretty much empty. There's not, there's no cloud to kind of add interest. So I use a 16 by nine crop, pop the horizon more or less on the third line. It's kind of cliche for a reason because it, it works. Uh, let's go there. I think our vignettes may be a little bit too noticeable. Uh, so. Let's feather it more. It's better. And I think we're more or less there, more or less done. I could conceivably clone out this lens flare. I don't mind these lens flares at all. They're just kind of photographic. There are a few uh, trails from aircraft flying over the Lake District's on a flight path, um, but I'm not too worried about those. They're fine. The natural in a way um yeah i think we're done so here's our before and after so naturally a very high contrast scene to start with uh, with some sensor spots and with a couple of exposure adjustments and some tweaks to contrast here and there we've brought out all that detail and if there was ever a case to be made for shooting raw or not jpeg this is the perfect situation for it Removed a couple of sensor spots that were causing problems and generally made for a better image. So there's our finished image. I hope you like it. Uh, do like and subscribe. Something like 66% of my viewers apparently don't subscribe. Uh, but if you'd like to see more of these, do hit that subscribe button uh, and I will catch you on the next one.